breaking your silence about abuse that you've personally experienced in this life is one of the most important decisions that you can make for your life. Just a few of the benefits of breaking your silence that we're going to talk about today include, number one, developing a new, courageous, and bold freedom of expression, possibly even for the first time in your life. This leads to a form of honesty, which will allow you to be able to articulate your disappointments, what you will tolerate, what you won't tolerate, on and on and on. We're going to talk more about that in this message. Number two, breaking your silence allows you to find community, possibly even family. Maybe even for the first time, understanding what family truly is, is you're finally able to relate and connect with people who share in your experience all from being able to break your silence. The third benefit that we're going to talk about is that of breaking your silence, being able to create in you a new drive, a new passion, perhaps even launch you into a brand new career, taking you places that you never thought would be possible. Now, this is what it looks like if you break your silence in the right way. There's also a wrong way to break your silence, which has the opposite effect. It can absolutely just plunge you into a deeper, darker hole. So we're then going to talk about the wrong way to break your silence so that you can avoid that trap. And then last but not least, I'm going to share with you my personal tips on things you can start doing right now, this very day, to start to break your silence in a healthy way. Let's go. My name is Kevin, and this is The Royal Weed. Now, before I continue with this very important message on breaking your silence about abuse that you've experienced. I do want to let you know that I'm here to support you. Down in the description box, you'll find access for one-on-one appointments with me. I do take telephone calls as well as video calls through Zoom, FaceTime, and WhatsApp. So if you are looking for one-on-one coaching, maybe you're at a point in your life where you are ready to break your silence and you want to be led in the right direction, head on down there, schedule some time with me. I'd love to coach you into a place of breaking your silence. In addition to that, I do have a coaching program, and now my coaching program is live and in person each and every day. It's not pre recorded material, it is a community, and we meet every day holding each other accountable to break the chains of trauma bonds, to go no contact, and to move into a toxic free 2023. And this week, by the way, we are working on being able to break the silence of abuse. So get in there and get started. Now, let's jump right into the benefits of being able to break your silence of abuse that you've experienced, narcissistic abuse, the trauma of dysfunctional relationships, whether it's family, a marriage, a dating relationship, or even a workplace environment. These benefits of being able to break your silence apply to all of it. The first one is developing a new courageous freedom of expression. For many of you, you've never quite had the freedom of expression allowed in your life that comes from the ability to articulate exactly what happened to you in a way that allows you to heal. And as a result, when we stuff the things that we really need to talk about, it keeps us in a place of being dishonest. We're dishonest with ourselves as we pretend And we live our lives pretending like we have no hurt, we haven't experienced pain, we haven't experienced the suffering, and as a result, we're unable to talk about the things that we really want out of relationships down the road. So being able to break the silence, if you will, means that you're able to articulate exactly what happened to you. And while you're doing this, the benefit is that you're processing it and you're able to speak into yourself the things that are just not tolerable, the things that are going to be toxic for you, the things that you don't want in your life. And it all begins with breaking your silence of the trauma that you've experienced. This is what's going to feed within yourself your ability to identify things that are not right in relationships. This creates a boldness in you. This creates an honesty in you. Yes, Being able to break your silence creates an honesty in you, a boldness in you that allows you to become more honest in all of your relationships instead of hiding, right? It really does do a lot to 
work on that fear. Now, again, this is going to get into some territory where we want to make sure we do this the right way. So hang on. I'm going to get there in just a moment. But I want to talk about another benefit first. The next benefit of being able to break your silence, in addition to allowing it to give you a bold new freedom of expression and honesty, the next is finding community and family. Typically, we are brought up believing that family only looks like the people who you were raised with, right? Even though, even the Bible and Jesus references family as being more than that. In fact, it was Jesus that said, who was my mother and who are my brothers? And he pointed to his disciples and he said, these people are my mother, my brother, my father, my sister. This community right here, because these people right here, I resonate with. These people right here, we understand, we're in agreement. Being able to break your silence will resonate with other people. It will put you in contact with people who share in your experience in life. And suddenly you're going to realize that you're not alone. You're going to identify with people who understand you and you understand them. And probably for the first time, it's going to feel like real family. And now you're going to be able to understand and widen your understanding of what family even is for that matter. What connection is really all about as you realize that you may have family members all over the world. When we talk about family members, we're talking about unity. We're talking about understanding. We're talking about people you resonate with, people who can support you, people who you can be supportive of. This now broadens what family is to you. Takes it from this little itty bitty thing right here that you had all the eggs in that basket, which became hurtful, and there was a lack of understanding to suddenly you have family everywhere. In my own personal experience, I am grateful for the fact that I have brothers and sisters all over the world at this very moment who I could call upon and who could call upon me because we relate and we understand. And in this dynamic and in this relationship, because we connect here, it's really developed a sense of community, of family, of support, and of understanding. It's helped me to understand what family really is. So that's another benefit. The third benefit, and this is by far one of the most profound benefits that I've discovered, is breaking your silence will create a drive, a passion, a purpose in your life. It will renew a sense that there is more for you to do. There's more for you to accomplish. It will push you. It will light that fire under your rear end, right? A lot of success stories in this world would not have happened had it not been for their ability to break their silence. I'm just going to name a few that we know of today just to give you an understanding of the power of breaking your silence when it comes to abuse or trauma. These are just some of the artists that you may know. Some musicians, for example, Justin Timberlake would be one of them with a song called Cry Me a River, right? This is a song that he had written expressing the emotions and the anger of being cheated. All right. Another one would be Adele. Adele is a famous artist that everyone knows. She has an entire album devoted to the hurt and the pain of a toxic, dysfunctional relationship and various abuses that was experienced in that relationship. This work of breaking her silence launched her into stardom. Another one that takes me back to the 90s, one of my old favorites would have been Alanis Morissette. For those of you who remember Alanis Morissette, once again, another artist who really dedicated an entire album to breaking her silence of abuse, of being cheated, of being wronged. And it, once again, it launched her into stardom, into success. Elton John, going way back to my parents' day, another artist who once again was breaking silence on a lot of his work of abuse and of trauma and of toxicity that he had dealt with, which once again launched him into stardom. Some of these artists were struggling prior to breaking their silence. It was breaking their silence that suddenly allowed them to do what? Find community and family all over the world. Suddenly people like you and me were listening, relating to the songs. 
Now, this was accomplishing two things for them. Number one, it was causing us to relate to them. That's why we fell in love with these particular songs, because we understood it and we felt connected to the artist. For many of you, it's almost as if the artist was singing your story or was writing your story. This is what it looks like when community and true family is formed. All because these artists chose to break their silence. Do you see the power of breaking your silence and what it can do for your life? One more I'm going to mention here would be Chris Rock as a comedian who, yes, experienced an abusive situation as he was physically assaulted on live television. But if you notice, he broke his silence in such a way to incorporate it in his routine, in his comedy act, which was both freeing for him, but relatable also for everybody else who watched. Now, there's no doubt about it. Being able to express yourself through breaking your silence can be powerful in at least the three benefits that I've talked about. But there is a wrong way to break your silence that would have the reverse effects. And this is what I want to caution you for or caution you about before we get into my tips for you. When it comes to expressing yourself, when it comes to breaking your silence coming out of an abusive relationship, it's important that we are not doing it in a way that is still engaging with the abusive person. In other words, we're not personalizing it. If you look at any of those people that I mentioned, the famous artists, even Chris Rock, breaking the silence wasn't done in a way that's like a witch hunt. They're not rallying people saying, let's go get them. That's not what breaking the silence in a healthy way is all about. And it's important to understand this because in order to effectively break your silence, you have to get out of that place. You have to take it out of a place of engaging with the abuser. So it's not like you're going on a witch hunt. You're not trying to rally the troops to go after this person who abused you. And there's a reason why that will not work. And there's a couple of reasons I'm going to share with you why that will fail when it comes to breaking your silence. Number one, the first reason making it personal and engaging in the situation as a way of breaking your silence. Number one is that it limits you based on the history of the engagement with that person. So if you personalize breaking your silence, meaning you want them to hear you, you want to make it about the abuser, you're going to feel limited. You're going to feel limited by the prior engagement of that relationship. So if in that relationship, they always told you that you are, you're making things up, you're exaggerating the abuse, you're too sensitive, you've got the story wrong, you're the one that, okay, you're going to be up against that, which is going to subconsciously cause you to walk on eggshells. So essentially, you won't even really be breaking your silence. You're going to be somewhat oppressed and operating out of fear and very careful about what you say. That's not breaking your silence. Again, breaking your silence means you need to be bold. Breaking your silence means you need to proclaim this is wrong. This is not good. This is abuse, right? The only way to do it in that healthy way is to not personalize it because while you're personalizing it, while you're doing it in a, in a way that's still engaged with the abuser, meaning you're talking so that they can hear you. You're trying to get people to grab their attention to them. You're going to be up against the walking on eggshells. You're going to be stifled. It's not going to work out very well for you. If you notice all the artists that I've mentioned earlier, not a single one of them used a name, right, of of anybody who really hurt them, not in the songs. They talked about the abuse as an experience, but they detached it from the person to make it not personal. This is what allowed them to break their silence in such an honest way. When you depersonalize it, You're able to be more honest. You're not bound by the fear that comes with the engagement. Okay. The second thing that's going to limit you if you're doing it as a witch hunt is you're going to be limited by your own values and your own beliefs as to what's good and bad and what's right and wrong. 
I come across this all the time during one-on-one coaching calls with people who would like to start to break their silence, but they approach it as if they're asking my permission. Is it okay if I talk about this or will I be a bad person? And what this tells me when I hear this is they're still thinking personally. They're still acting as though they're engaged with the person. And when you are, when you're doing it out of a place of being engaged with them, then yes, you're going to be judging yourself. I can't say that about that person. I, I can't. It's not right. It's mean. And then I look just like them and, and I'm no better and on and on and on. This is what it looks like out of being engaged with the abuser. Okay. So the goal is to make it unpersonal. The goal is to distance yourself from the abuser. The goal is to first declare that this is not a witch hunt. You're not trying to point fingers at a person. You are instead trying to simply break your silence that abuse is real and you've experienced it. And is there a chance that your abuser might know you're saying these things? Sure. But you won't be bound by the fear of them coming after you because you can just say, hey, nobody knows it's you, right? If you're going to make a fuss, well, then that's on you. But I'm talking about my experience. Breaking your silence is about you and your experience only. It is not a witch hunt. All right. Let's talk about now some of the things that you can start doing today that I would encourage you to start doing in order to break your silence from abuse so that you can just see what's possible in your future. Number one, I want to remind you that I do have a coaching program. And in the coaching program, especially this week, we're going to be working on breaking the silence. We're going to start doing writing exercises and start to do things to get you to that place where you're comfortable breaking your silence. But here's what I would encourage you to do, with or without the Rowie Coaching Program, is start writing. Start writing. Whether or not you are a writer, storyteller, songwriter, or not, write about abuse, write about your experience, write about the feelings, write about the wrongs, write about just get it out. And if you're not a writer, you can just do it in, in short little spurts like memes. You can create memes about abuse. This is a form of writing it out. Just making little three-line meme. Abusers be like, bleh, right? This is, this is a way of, of breaking your silence based on your experience. It's calling something out. If you're a songwriter, you can. there's no reason why you have not yet started to write songs about abuse, about the hurt, about the trauma. For those of you who are songwriters out there, I'm telling you this can be the difference between you being a stagnant writer, just putting out whatever song, struggling to make it, and launching you into stardom. Keep in mind that what reaches people is relatability. And your ability to break your silence will, in fact, relate with others. Start writing. Many of you can write blogs. Just start writing. Write your experience. You can leave the name of the person out, but write the abusive experience. The next thing would be to share your expressions publicly. This is my next tip. Share your expressions on abuse publicly. Break your silence publicly. Again, not in a way that's a witch hunt. But just being able to share what you've experienced, how you've been wronged, how you've been cheated on, how there are people in the world who cheat on others, who steal from others. This will reinforce your new understanding of the world around you. Not so that you can walk around in a negative way, but so that you can walk around in an honest way. Once again, these two things, writing things out and starting to share your expressions publicly, ultimately, are benefiting you by, number one, creating boldness in you, right? Number two, helping you understand new community, new family, and what it really is. And number three, exciting new drive and passion within you. These are the benefits. And so these are the tips to do that. And as I said before, I'm here to support you through this process. If you need one-on-one -on -one support, head on down there, schedule some time with me. I would love to talk with you. And I'll be back with more videos for you right here on The Royal We.